Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we'll be making a more advanced save system than the simple ones I've covered in the past. The video will be slightly longer, but by the end, you'll have a system that will be easily expandable as your game grows. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So when I last did saving, we made this simple example. We have some data that we want to save in this class. And then over here, we basically say create or open the file, serialize the data into the file and close. And then the reverse here, we uh, open the file if it exists, and then we deserialize the data back into this example data field, and we close the file. And that works, it's really simple, it's really quick. I also showed the uh, JSON example here. The only problem with this is our data is in here, which, which is what makes it simple. But your data for your game to be saved is gonna be all over the place. Different game objects will have different mono behaviors with different bits of data you want to save. And one, um, your player, for example, might have a level system that you want to save the level and XP, but then your enemies might also have level and XP, but you don't want them to be saved. And you don't want to have to create two scripts where one is saved and one isn't. It'd be much easier if you could just add on an extra component or remove it if that thing wants to be saved or not. Okay, that's what we're going to be building in this video. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's start the coding. So we'll need four files for this video. We're going to need the saving, loading, advanced example. So obviously we have the simple example from last time. So I've just made um, a file here called advanced example and it's empty right now. All the files are empty just to get started with. We've got the savable entity mono behavior. This is going to sit on anything that you want to be saved. So just like I said, how your player and your enemy might have a level system on them both, but uh, maybe the player is the only one that gets saved. So you just stick this mono behavior on the player and you don't stick it on the enemy and it works just fine. Then we need the level system. This will just be the example implementation of the saving and loading. So we'll have some data in here that gets saved and loaded. And then we need the interface I savable, and we're going to be sticking that in here. We can do it right now, I savable, to basically say the level system is a savable thing. And we'll obviously add some methods in here so that the level system has to implement them. So yeah, let's start off with the savable interface. But one thing I want to mention about the design and structure of the save system, I originally learned it about a year ago from Game Dev TV. They have an RPG course and they have a save system in there. And I tried implementing it in my own project and found it really useful. And I've used it over and over again when I need to have saving. It's really easy to get working and you know you can use it in many different kinds of projects. It's not project specific, though I have made quite a few tweaks to it over time because you know the exact implementation they used isn't exactly how I wanted it. So this won't be the exact same thing. It's got quite a few changes in it, but the actual structure and design is pretty much the same. So what we need is we need two methods for a savable mono behavior. We need to be able to save data and load data. So we need a method called capture state, okay? So when we need to save, we need to return some data from the mono behavior that implements this. So for example, this uh, level system, okay, is savable, so I savable. We need a method in here to um, capture state that returns an object. Now, the reason we return object is because we don't have a clue for each different savable thing, what kind of data it's gonna return. All we care about is that it's serializable so that it's effectively savable, that we can take that data and write it to a text file. Um, so the fact that we say return object means it can return basically anything. And then we also want a method that takes in an object. Okay, so uh, restore state that takes in an object, which is the state. So this is effectively the save method and the load method for an object, okay? So we can implement those right now to save and load. And then we can go make our save data. So it has to be serializable and it's gonna be a private struct called save data, okay? And the stuff we wanna save, we wanna save an int for your level and an int for your XP. And this level system, obviously we need some way to change it. So you'd have a system where you gain XP and you level up, but for now we're just gonna set these in the inspector. So um, for example, we want the int level equals one and we'll say uh, int XP equals 100, okay? And what we need to do is when we save, okay, what do we do when we save? Well, we want to return a new instance of save data, okay? And we just set the thing. So level equals level and XP equals XP. And that's it. So whenever the game calls the save method, it will loop over all the I saveable uh, classes, or in this case, they're all mono behaviors, all the saveable mono behaviors on your game object and get their state, which will be different based on you know each mono behavior. So for a level system, we return level and XP. Okay, and then when we restore state, this is when we're loading it from a file, we get the data back, but it's as an object. We don't actually know what it is. 
but we know, so we're going to cast it. So casting, so we're going to say uh, save data state. Okay, so we can say over here like var uh, save data equals that. And then once we're here and we've got our save data, we can then say uh, level equals save data dot level. Make sure we get the right one. Okay, save data dot level. And then XP equals save data dot XP. And this is basically how you save and load the level system. And the reason why this entire save system is really good is later on, if I want to say, you know, for a level system, we need to store one extra thing. I can just add that extra thing to the uh, save data and then make sure I uh, save it and load it here. And then, you know, it works just fine. Don't have to make any of the modifications anywhere else. It's really easy to expand upon. So now over in the savable entity script, this is the thing we stick on objects that we want to be saved. So like I mentioned earlier, your player and your enemy might both have level systems, but you only want to save the player's level. Maybe the enemy's level doesn't ever change or just doesn't need to be saved. So any game object that needs to be saved, you stick this on it. Because this, this is the component that will loop over all the other components on the game object that are I savable and grab the data, okay? So if you want something to be saved, then you just stick this on it. And we need some kind of identifier, some unique identifier. Because let's imagine you have, you know, 10 different game objects that store level and XP. Well, then when you load it back up, how do you know which, which is which, okay? So each different one needs its own ID. And you could manually set all those IDs to be whatever you want, right? You could just type out, like, you know, player and then other things. The problem is um, you might eventually give two things the same ID without meaning to. So the way to avoid that is by having it being generated for you. So the way I've done that, there, there are many ways to do this. Uh, I've just said, make a new GUID and convert it to a string, okay? And I've made this a method that I can call on the game object. We'll actually see this in a, in a second if I just go back to Unity and let it compile. If I go over to the player and say this is a savable entity, and then right-click on the script and press generate ID, it now gets this ID, okay? Now, technically, okay, technically, there is a chance that when you generate an, uh, a GUID and then you generate another one, they could be the same. But I've looked up the chance of that happening, and apparently, if... 1 billion GUIDs per second were generated for an entire year, the probability of a duplicate would only be 50% if that was 1 billion a second for a year, okay? So I don't think you have to worry about this, and even professional business applications use GUIDs and rely on their uniqueness, okay? You've got nothing to worry about for that. Um, and this is just a way so that when we save to a file with all our data about our XP and level, we can store uh, an ID. And then when we go back to Unity and we load up from the save file, we can go find the entity with that ID and give all the data back. So we now need two methods to save and load for a game object. So just like in the actual level system, we also have a method that returns an object called capture state, but this is capturing the state for the entire game object. And what we do is we basically loop over all the savable components on this game object and add to, to this dictionary where the key is the type okay so for example the key in this is going to be level system so we have a dictionary where the string in the first uh, scenario is level system and the object the value is capture state which in the case of level system is this struct with level and xp so we now have a dictionary of all our savable things on this game object where the keys are the component types and then the um values are whatever data you're saving so right here, for now, we'll just have one entry in this dictionary where it says level system, and the object is a struct with XP and level. And you can see how later on when we load it from file, we can do the reverse. So we can say, go get the key, which will be the name of the component, then go to that component and call that method passing in the object as the data. Okay, this is the code here for capturing, which is saving, and then for loading, we take in the state, which is an object to this point, and we need to cast it back to a dictionary of string and object. So we're back at this point, okay, we've got this state here, except from going forwards, we're now going backwards kind of. So we've got all our data, but it doesn't really mean anything right now, it's just there in that dictionary. We need to put it back into all of those components. So let's loop over each component. So let's imagine this is looping once for now for our level system. This savable is our level system. So we're going to say, okay, get the type name of our level system. So this will just be a string that says level system. Then it says, okay, go for a dictionary. And if there's any key, level system, then get the value for that level system, which will be the struct of your level and your XP. And it says, basically, go give it to the restore state method of that savable. So it'll go into here. And this will be our level and our XP. We cast it back and then we set the values. And then finally, the saving and loading advanced example script. 
Now this is going to be where we actually save and load to and from a file. And it's where we go and grab all the savable entities and grab their data or give it back when we're loading. I've just made a quick property here to get the save path. So application.persistentDataPath. It's the same as that what we did in the simple example. We have it over here. Okay, you can you know call it whatever you want. I'm calling it save.txt. You can do whatever you like there. And we now need a method for saving and loading. So I've made a save and a load method. Okay, now currently they have no logic because we need to write a little bit more, but we've may have, I've made it so that we can in the inspector just press save and load to get it working right now. You might want to make this you know a static method and you can call it from anywhere. It's up to you however you want to actually call save and load for your game, but this is just an easy way for me to do it in the inspector. So we need quite a few methods in here, but the first one will keep it simple with save file. Okay, we pass in state and state is your entire save data, not just for one game object, just the entire save data. And we'll just try and open a particular file or the file path that we've got up here. Okay, we try and open that file and then we uh, serialize the data into the file. That's really simple just for saving to the file. Then that's for capturing the state, but now we need a way to re restore it, which is for loading. We do the reverse, we loop over the game objects, but instead of saving stuff to a dictionary, we actually load it from a dictionary. So we say, you know, get the value for this ID, and then here's the value, and restore state, passing it in. Okay, so this is saving, and this is loading. And let's put a space between these two. We need one more method, so I'll put it here next to save file. We need load file, and load file. Um, when it loads, it returns the dictionary of string and object. So what we do is we say, if there is no save file for this, this path, then obviously return an empty dictionary. There is no save data because this file doesn't exist anymore. You've never saved. If you have saved and the path does exist, then we'll open it and we'll deserialize the stream. And you know you can cast it really wherever you want, but I've decided to cast it here back to the dictionary of string and object. And then all we need to do is kind of link these together. So when we save, we just say var state equals load file. Okay, so let's go get the data from the file. Then we want to um, capture state. Now the reason we, we load first is because imagine you've got um, something that's savable in scene one and something that's savable in scene two. You can't just overwrite the file completely every single time because if you're in say, uh, scene one and you save just that data that's there, then the problem is you'll lose all your save data from say, uh, scene two. So every time you save, you need to load up what you already have and ov only overwrite what you need to overwrite. You don't want to actually um, lose all your data in other scenes. So basically, when we save, we must first load, then we capture state, okay, and then we save to the file, the state, like so. And then loading is much simpler. Um, it's just restoring state, okay, but we need state, so var state equals load file, okay, so we when we load, we just load. But when we save, we load then save. Okay, that's basically how it works. And now we can go test it inside of Unity. So my player is already a savable entity and he's gonna have a level system. And his level is one and 100 XP right now. If we go over to our saving and loading example, let's just remove the simple example and add the advanced one. Okay, and all we need to do is we need to press play and give it a go. So our player's level and XP is currently one and 100. So I'm gonna change this to be five and then some other random number, one, one, two, three, two, three, doesn't really matter. If I go to the saving and loading example and press save, okay, it saves, I stop, I press play again. Now the player's data should have reset, okay? And then if I go back to my saving and loading and press load, then the player's data has now been loaded. And if I go over here into the file where the save uh, is, here's all the data. Okay, now obviously it's not really meant to be human readable. It is to some extent, um, but you can actually look through here and find the data. Um, yeah, again, it's not really human readable, but you can see stuff here about level and XP, saving, loading, um, dictionary, you know, all the data's there. The point is we don't know how to read it properly, but the computer does, and our data was loaded back here. And it's now really, really easy to, you know, expand upon this. I can go to this wall and say the wall has a level system too. If I don't want it to be saved to file, then I don't have to. If I do, then I just add a saveable entity and then generate an ID. And there you go, now the wall can be saved. If I, I can actually do this without playing, if I just press save and then go um, press, uh, let's, let's actually change the wall to have, press play, change it to have a level of uh, 29. Okay, go to saving loading, save, stop playing. Then if I press load now, so wait, let's look, the wall, sorry, is one and 100. But if I press load, 
the wall is now 29 and 100. So this does work if you're not running the game. It's you know it doesn't need to be running for it to work. It doesn't rely on an update loop or any callbacks or anything. Uh, but yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you see how easy it is to now expand. You don't have to go back and touch any of the level system. You just need to make new mono behaviors like the level system and just stick on this interface, okay? And then write these methods to save and load whatever data you need to save and load. So yeah, that's it for the video. I know it was quite a long one. I'm sorry about that, but it was a more complex topic. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansikan, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Renault, Malvin, Samran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beardodai, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website. If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.